Hi, and welcome back to Build the Weight Loss Practice of Your Dreams. I have a special guest today, someone who really helps practitioners not only uh, address the physical part of losing weight, but the inner part and the mental part of that. So I'm really excited to have Dr. John Sclair with us today. He has a long history of helping patients, helping physicians help patients with his inner diet program. And I am actually gonna let him tell us a little bit more about that and then we'll dive in into how this is a little bit different than just behavior modification and how it really helps uh, maximize the uh, outcome for your patients and solidify longer term results. So without further ado, uh, Dr. Sclair, I am so excited to have you here today. Tell us a little bit about you and your business and how it came to be. Well, it's very, I'm very happy to be here, Carol. Nice to meet you, and it's a pleasure to be able to speak with your audience. And yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. I developed this inner diet program over 30 years ago. I cannot I hardly believe that. Mm -hmm. Never dreaming I would be in the weight loss business, but it kind of drove me there. And part of what happened was as I was in private practice, I had a private practice of counseling and psychotherapy, and uh, I mainly saw women in my practice. And it didn't seem to matter what they came in for we would always end up talking about weight and body image and, and frustration with not being able to lose weight. So the curious George in me got, uh, got me interested in investigating this. And as I looked, started to look at all the programs in my area, the physician-based programs and the commercial programs and hospital-based programs, it became really obvious to me very quickly that the problem was all the time and energy and money was really being thrown at the symptom, which was the weight, and not enough set at the, what with the problem? Why was this a continual problem? And why did people get frustrated and were unsuccessful so often? So I started to just investigate this on my own and it ended up becoming this program I developed called the Inner Diet. And I've been doing this for over 30 years now. And really basically what I do is I, uh, my business provides your weight loss business with a uh, self-help home study program that addresses emotional eating. So it goes along with any weight loss program. It doesn't matter what your nutritional program is because I don't deal with that aspect of it. But my, my piece is a component that makes your program stronger, more personalized to the client or to the patient, mm -hmm. and helps them to really look behind the curtain, if you will, in order to start making better decisions about why they, why they get frustrated and give up trying to manage their weight. Right. Well, a little bit more on that. You know, in our earlier conversations, and as um, you know, I've researched your program and all that, there's something that you said that has stuck with me. And I want you to explain a little bit about that. But so many practitioners and uh, all of our listeners know I, I, I manage a bariatric surgery and medical practice. We talk about behavior modification. And when we were yeah. talking about that, you quickly uh, you know, interjected that it's different than behavior modification. Tell us a little bit about that, because I think that is really uh, one of the things that differentiates you, number one, and also could lend itself to the increased success rate that you see. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and I, I, I always wake up a bit when I hear someone say behavior modification, because everybody claims to have a behavior modification program. And right. you definitely, there are components of behavior modification that are really important. And, and helpful to the weight loss patient. But to me, it's more than behavior modification because there are two approaches to this really. There's the behaviorism approach and behaviorists by definition, I used to teach a lot of psychology courses to mm -hmm. college students, so I know a little bit about this. But behaviorism is more interested in what you do, uh, the overt observable behavior, what you do, like training a dog to sit up or roll over or whatever, use behavior modification. Right. Because you really don't care what the dog thinks. You just want it to perform that behavior. However, with humans like us, you know, it's, it's not so simple because we have this thing called a mind and a brain that interferes sometimes with the things we want to do. So uh, to me, what's important is a cognitive approach to mm -hmm. changing people's behavior. So my program, the inner diet, is more of a cognitive modification program. That is, it's more interested in, in how you process information and how you make decisions uh, and how your mind works and really how you approach things. So the key really is, is what you do as a result of what you think. And so, you know, the thought always precedes the action. So mm -hmm. to me, the real way to get 
to help that client to solve this problem is not so much to try to shape their behavior in different ways, as much as it's to help them become a better, more th uh, uh, th uh, critical thinker sure. so that they can make decisions that are more goal oriented and uh, don't get in the way of their desire to manage their weight and be healthy. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's cognitive modification, I think, is change what you think and you will change what you do. You can't help it. Right, right. So give us, um, give us a few examples of how that applies with your program and with uh, the patients that we see. Well, what the inner diet, what it does, it starts out with a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. So there's a, the, the client takes a 40 item questionnaire. And let me just mention that it's not just a bunch of questions I thought were interesting to ask. The uh, development of the questionnaire was the topic of a doctoral dissertation. So it's gone through real science, a real scrutiny, and it's a, it's a testing instrument that's been standardized. So if you answer the questions honestly, it will really be spot on and will really identify where you fall on the six issues that the inner diet addresses. So you start out with this questionnaire and it, it helps you to, it gets you even thinking, people tell me just taking the questionnaire turns the light on a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you make me think that the inner diet really is an awareness tool. I don't want people to think it's a psychological instrument that, because, you know, you don't want to scare people. And there's right. no right or wrong answers to them. So the questions are just asking people's opinions about things related to weight loss and dieting and the emotional aspects of it. And these are common issues that get in the way of people just trying to manage their weight. Mm -hmm. So they take this questionnaire, and then after they take the questionnaire, there's this analysis that goes on with the way they answer the questions. And then they get back a personalized profile that tells them how they scored on the six issues, mm -hmm. explains what their scores mean. And then there's also the third part of it is there's an activity book. And uh, I wrote an hour and 46 minutes of audio support as well that I wrote and recorded that walks them through the whole program. So for the practitioner, it's a self-help home study program that I designed for the patient to do at home away from the office because right. you know as well as anybody you don't have a lot of time in the office to be working right. and a lot of people don't have the expertise or the comfort level in right. talking to their people about issues like this so i do it all for them and mm -hmm. it works very well and it's make it's intended to strengthen the program that you already have okay not a replacement for anything necessarily just a way Nothing. to help it, exactly. kind of add something to the patient's toolbox Exactly. Uh, very effective to their toolbox. Because I do think that, you know, we talk ourselves in and out of lots of things all day long. Yeah. And you think about all the different decisions people are making about food and just about their behavior and their choices and that sort of thing. And if we really could control that or somehow impact that in a positive, correct way, yeah, it's pretty, pretty it's amazing. Funny you say that because <laughs> I have, a, I've done a lot of writing about these things and mm -hmm. uh, I have a concept that I call the family feud. It has nothing to do with that game show, yeah. but it has to do with this, this battle that goes on. I call it the family feud because there's this responsible adult within every patient, the one that walks in your office and says, you know, wants help and they want to lose weight and they want to feel better and look better and do the right thing. That's that responsible adult. The problem is, there's this little whiny brat kid part too that doesn't care about how you look or what you weigh or what you eat. And that part of you is always negotiating you away from that goal. So this internal battle between these two parts of yourself, um, you know, I, I remember when I was younger, this concept came to me watching a cartoon and there was a good angel on one shoulder of the character and a bad angel on the other. Right. And that's what happens. We have these two voices whispering in our ear and one is always trying to sabotage your desire to change. Right. I want to get a little bit into, you're not expecting this, I know, but I want to get a little bit into some trends that we're seeing nowadays. Okay. And a lot of times in podcasts, we don't necessarily, you know, indicate what's going on, but we're in the middle of a pandemic with the coronavirus at the time that we're, we're recording this. Correct. And uh, it's, you know, it's turning everyone upside down every which way. And one of the things I see posted a lot is people commenting about, you know, this period of time and how it's impacting, it's impacting in major ways. And I'm not downplaying that, but one of the things that I really think it's affecting is going to be a, a, a potential negative trend is 
the degree to which people are feel as if they are uh, stress eating, the fact that they are eating the wrong things, they're having a harder time getting their fitness in, their routines are uprooted, and they're really uh, worried about gaining weight. And many people just in this period of time that we've experienced this, and it's in by no means near, close to being over, you know, the feeling like, by, gosh, by, by the time a few more weeks pass, I'm going to really be in a much worse spot. Do you have any advice or anything that could be helpful for practitioners with their patients or for patients specifically about how to manage these tumultuous emotions that then lead to this struggle in our mind and this behavior that is really detrimental short-term and long-term? So that was a kind of a power packed question. I'm sorry. I just really, since I have you here with your expertise, I just felt like I would be remiss if I didn't ask that. Would you mind repeating that? <laughs> just kidding. Um, right. no, we have to keep uh, our sense of humor for goodness sakes, huh? You have to, you have yeah. to. But you know, it's interesting you mentioned stress eating. It's one of the issues that we address on the inner diet. Mm -hmm. And 70, 78% of all women who take the inner diet score high or very high on stress. So I'm telling you that three out of every four women that you work with struggle right. with stress eating. Mm -hmm. So it's a very common, very common issue. So I, I think, and, and I do have, I do have it, things in my program that help people to deal with stress, but people, you know, everybody responds differently to stress and what works for one person doesn't work for another. So for instance, one person might do some meditation, you know, to help some kind of meditative thing. Whereas another person might find that useless and they might want to take a walk or, or listen to some music or maybe do some exercise or something. You have to find what works for you. And I think, I think as far as trends, to me, that's what's important for the practitioner to do is to make their program more personalized, uh, to right. deal more specifically with that individual in front of you, which is why the pro, my inner diet program is designed to identify differences between people so that you're you're not so that you're really helping that person deal with the thing the monster in front of them if you will right um, so it's it's a and and also the other thing i think i see with trends as you ask about trends is mm -hmm. telemedicine you know you're doing things like we're doing right now has right. become is becoming more and more part of what we're doing and the program that i developed and when i first developed it years ago it was a paper and pencil thing and you had to I had to print the profiles and mail them back to the physician. And uh, now everything's done in a heartbeat on the internet. Right. So it, to, if you work with remote patients, for instance, people who don't come into your office, it allows you to be able to access those people. Because before you, before you start to work with someone who's a stress eater, you first have to identify they're a stress eater. Sure. And then help them to find a way that works for them to substitute. It's called substitution behavior to substitute eating for, uh, you know, something else, something more healthy. Right, right. I love that. And I, I want you to talk a little bit about how, you know, we talked about how this is really easy for a physician to utilize in their practice, but talk a little bit about what, how, how do they know that they've got a stress eater? What's the feedback to them so they can understand what the test did or discovered with their patients. Well, you make a good point because I've had people tell me on occasion say, well, I know a stress eater when I see one. Well, you might, but your, your best subjective guess is never as good as a sound objective measurement. Sure. And so what I provide with the inner diet are sound, objective, statistically valid measurements on these people. So you don't have to guess anymore. So you, you give the individual the questionnaire and after they take it, and I'll tell you that there are two ways people do this. You can either give it to the client in the office, like on a tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, that's most of my clients. There's a form that you can print. You give to the client, they take it home, access it at home, take it on their computer. And as soon as they finish the questionnaire, they hit the submit questionnaire button. Mm -hmm. And then two emails are generated. One goes to them with their results. And one goes to the professional with a, a, with a, a summary of the results. Okay. So that you know before they come in the next time how they scored. So you'll know okay. if they're a stress eater before they come back. Right. And then for the, then there's obviously ways then to cope. Once I identify what my behaviors are or how I fall into your criteria, then, uh, then you get into how to, how to cope with that. 
through your yes, I, I have in, in the activity book, uh, they get the patient gets a, a profile, personalized profile, and that's different for everybody, depending on how you answer the questions, you get different information. And then there's a 32 page uh, activity book, which is divided into six sections, one for each of the six sections. And in there are suggestions for how to address the stress eating. And then I have all the audio that goes along with it, where I walk them through it, explain, right. you know, what they need to do and why they're doing it and how to benefit. Right. Right. We just need to keep you in our back pocket when those situations <laughs> arrive. That's the audio. <laughs> That's why I'm always there. <laughs> right. And you can listen to it. So then you have like a lifetime access to it or. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 And the other thing that I like to do is, I mean, I'm always, I, what I love doing, Carol, is I love being available to the professional. If mm -hmm. you use my program, you can, you get me too, <laughs> you know, right. it good news or bad news. I'm telling you, if you like me or not, but uh, I'm always there to help. And if your client has a question, uh, I'll be helpful to help them. I, my goal was to take as little of your time as possible and allowing you to add this component to your program so that you can claim to have a holistic program with those three legs to the stool, you know, right. the diet, exercise, and then the mental part. Right, right, right. I, I love that. And I think making it convenient for the physician or the practitioner yeah. is so important and then also having access to you. I know we've talked numerous times and every time has been uh, very, very helpful and very informative. And you've actually written a book as well, right? Well, not a book. I've written some audio programs. Audio programs. Uh, okay. And, but the inner diet is sort of like a book. I mean, it's not, it's a personalized book mm -hmm. and it's about you. And that's why the patient likes it so much. They love reading about themselves. Right. And taking a questionnaire is always interesting for people. And uh, it allows people to look inside a little bit, you know, because it, the inner diet is an awareness tool and awareness is the key to change. Right. You know, I always say it's like a, a bright light in a dark room. You know, it breaks through the darkness, it shows the way, and it allows you to move with confidence. So right. we want to give that awareness to people so that they can become more mindful and less mindless about the health choices that they make. Right. And then the more they do, the, the greater that muscle grows, I'm sure, so that they can uh, right. keep that behavior going. And yeah, is, it applicable, Pardon me? is it applicable for medical and surgical programs? Yes. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a great little program. And again, as I said, it's something to give how most of my clients do. So a lot of my professional clients is they say, this is for you to do on your own away from the clinic. You know, mm -hmm. we believe you need to address this part of the program. Uh, and uh, we have a program here that does that for you. But you're to do that away from the clinic. So the, the, the professional simply gives them the form to take home and then encourages them to go online, take the right. questionnaire and do the activity book and listen to the audio. Right, right. Uh, I, I love that. Yeah, it's very, uh, your uh, reviews are very great. And, um, and so I appreciate that. I, I was wondering if uh, you happen to have, I know you don't have your own crystal ball, but <laughs> you work with practitioners, a lot of them and patients. And so tell me, do you see, what do you see for the future of, of weight loss? Any uh, predictions or anything like that that you could might be helpful for pre preparation? Well, I do see, you know, I've been doing this a long time, but I see so much more now uh, when I see people presenting programs about the importance of the psychology of weight loss. Right. It's something I've been doing for a long time. So I think the future is, is going along those lines. It's more in the lines of personalizing programs too which right. is what, again, what I like about my program is it's personalized for each individual mm -hmm. and it allows itself to be used in the, uh, in the telemedicine uh, model these days. And right. I think those things are trends for the future right. is more personalized programs, more programs that deal with the, in, with the inner person, you know, the psychology of the person yeah. and things that allow you to do uh, a way that you don't have to walk into an office. Right, right. And it's a great way to differentiate your practice. Yeah, a lot of people do use my program as a lure in their advertising to bring people in. And mm -hmm. it does, because people are curious about, well, what is that thing, you know? Well, come right. in and find I, out. I think most people uh, intellectually know that, you know, emotions are really important when it comes to weight loss. And yet we all struggle with how to control that because, mm -hmm. you know, you can be going along just fine and then something happens, whether it's a pandemic or whether it's, mm -hmm. you know an argument or it's a 
you know, some change in your routine, anything can dissuade you and can, it could be your friend saying, it's okay. You've been so good lately. Let's go ahead and just indulge with this, whatever it is, you know? Um, So knowing how to help combat that, I think is really important. It is. And and there's always this part of you again, you you say it's your friend saying, go ahead and have, well, there's that part of you, that voice, remember that child I talked about, who's always looking for that opportunity. So the more you can become aware of that internal uh, dynamic that's going on inside your head, the more you can identify with that responsible part of yourself, right. you control that impulsive part of yourself, then your potential for success is greatly increased. Right, right, I agree. And you and I were talking a little bit about uh, the audience. I, we have people who have practices and have been around for a long time, medical, surgical, and some that are just really you know, taking a, maybe an initial step there, they've been in family practice or internal medicine, and they're just, they really want to just focus on weight loss only. And so they're really beginning their practice. A lot of my bariatric business boss, I've got both types in my membership program as well. And it's so fun working with any one of them, but what would you have uh, as in terms of any advice for someone who's sort of a newbie uh, in, or, or somebody experienced, but any, any, potential advice that you might have for them with regards to, you know, the best way to get an optimal patient outcome long-term? Well, I would say, I would answer that question maybe this way. I think one of the best things you can do is you have to convince people that you can really help them. I mean, to me, that is at the heart of it. When you, when someone comes in to see you, you know, I used to always think when someone would come to my office to see me, something probably just happened. You know, there was some event or something, somebody said something or something happened to bring them in. So I think there's an opportunity to the, the person has to be convinced that you can really help them. Yeah. Uh, and then I think you have to get them invested in the outcome because, you know, so many people, I think when they come into an office, they sort of want to go through the drive through window of weight loss. You know, they just want to walk, go fat, right through and order it and be done with it. And so what you want to do, I think, is you want to have the more actively, instead of being a passive recipient of information, you want right. to have to be an active participant in their wellness and their healing. So that's why I think the more personalized you can make your, your program mm-hmm. and the more uh, compassionate you can be and the more interested you are in helping them, uh, the better their chances are of being successful. Right. And actually, I, th- I find it, it makes your practice more enjoyable, you yeah. know? Yeah. And if you're not... It, enjoying it or, or doing that then sometimes you, you know you wonder you know is it the right move you exactly. know but, I think you um, really have to have helping in your heart as they say yeah and yeah. really want to help people and I've met some wonderful people in this field who yeah. truly do have helping in their heart absolutely and you and I have spent a fair amount of time talking and one of the things we agree on is that you know no matter what's going on it is really really important to you know to stay positive and, you know, to be a part of the solution versus Absolutely. just sort of, you know, wringing your hands or really feeling sort of a doom and gloom sort of thing. I love that we share that because I think it's really important and that's what's going to carry us through. But I know you have so much inspiration to give to people. Can you share a little inspirational thought before we end this uh, that you could, you could share with people to help them from a personal perspective and or a, a business perspective? Well, let's see. Hmm. Well, one of my favorite, one of my favorite sayings is, is that, uh, and a matter of fact, I would have, when I, when I was doing this with patients myself, I would have people say this, this phrase, by looking at themselves in the mirror. You know, those mirror activities are really powerful. If you can look yourself in the eye. And the, the phrase that I, always comes to my mind is, you will never become who you want to be by remaining who you are. True. And it's a powerful, and it's true, because people want to be somebody different, but they don't want to do something different. Mm-hmm. So I would have, sometimes if they're at a point where they're being tempted, for instance, yeah. and I would have them repeat that to themselves, or go into the mirror and take a look at their eye, you know, just before they eat anything and say, you will never become, or I will never be, use I, yeah. I will never become who I want to be. And that's powerful. I mean, if you really do that, uh, and it puts the responsibility back in their lap again, make them more personally invested in solving this problem. Because the bottom line is the, mo- the motto to the inner diet uh, is you can't change your weight until you change your mind. Yeah. And you really can't do anything until you change your mind. 
but it's all about the mental part because that ghost in the machine, you know, that thing that lives inside our brain that makes us who we are, mm -hmm. uh, shapes our lives and, and, and really determines our successes and failures. So to right. empower that part of the individual, you know, uh, I, I liken it to another thing uh, that I like to talk about is if you think of it in a business model, you know, uh, this body is under new management. Think that you're a new man, you're a manager. You're coming in. You got to turn this business around. You know, it's not been successful. It's not doing well. But you've been hired to change that outcome, and it's going to be hard. You have to make some tough decisions, but that's what you have to do. So I have them write, "This body is under new management," and put it on a mirror, or "This kitchen is under new management." Put it in their kitchen, you right? Know, to remind them that they're the ones. They're the solution to this problem. Right. You, uh, you have never seen the inside of my bathroom, but if you can see <laughs> nope. my mirror, it has like, I have affirmations and thoughts just like that. And it's, I do find it really empowering to keep it there. And I have some of them on my computer screen and I just find that to be, I do find that to be really empowering. It, it is. If you can really get yourself to say those things, uh, it's, you know, it, it's a powerful thing. It's like, you know, are, are you unable or are you just unwilling? Right. Because people, people confuse being unable with uh, uh, being unwilling. I mean, right. most people are capable. I used to always say to people, I know you can do this. I don't know if you will, mm -hmm. but I know you can. It depends on the decisions that you make and the actions that you take along the way. Right. I love that. It's kind of like replacing uh, I can't with I won't. That's right. Because it's your choice. That's yeah. right. Yeah. This is really good stuff from a business perspective. You know, a lot of times we hold ourselves back in business from moving to the next level or from adding an, an additional revenue stream or, you know, growing, adding an employee, you know, those sorts of things. So these, that, that really applies both places. So I, I love yeah. that. How can, um, we've kind of come to the end of our time, unfortunately, but okay. how can people reach out to you to learn more about your program and also about how to reach out to you with specific questions. Well, I would, I would love to hear from some people and you can get me at Dr. Sclare at inner diet.com D R S K L A R E at inner diet.com. And I would love for you to send me an email and tell me what you think. And I would also love to uh, give you the opportunity to take the inner diet so you can see what it is, give you a sample. And if you send me an email and tell me you're interested, I will send you some information about the inner diet and send you the opportunity to take it as well. And uh, you know, one of the, uh, my final thought is I always tell my clients, Carol, that uh, if they decide to use the inner diet with their practice, uh, my goal is for them to look back one day and say that this was one of the best decisions they ever made about their practice. Mm -hmm. And I promise you that every day I try to make that happen for people because I'm available. I love what I do. I want to help your patients, and I can only do that by getting you up and running uh, with this program to give it to them. So right, anytime right. I can help, I'm, I'm happy to. Awesome. I love your sincerity. I love your authenticity, uh, and it's been just a pleasure getting to know you over our many past conversations and having you on our podcast today. I am really excited because I know your time is really valuable, so we appreciate you and all you're doing to help physicians help their patients lose weight uh, in the short and long term. Well, I appreciate the opportunity very much, Carol. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And just remember, you can't change your weight until you change your mind. It's all yes. about the thinking. <laughs> You can't change your weight. That is so true. And uh, that's all we have for today. If you have not subscribed to this podcast, why not? Click the subscribe button here. You know we're available on iTunes, Stitcher. And also you can access it through uh, my website, weightlosspracticebuilder.com. If you are not a member of Bariatric Business Boss, you need to join that too, bariatricbusinessboss.com. Best little teeny bit of money that you can spend for one-on-one -on -one access lots of weekly trainings and all that sort of thing. So we have come to the end of our time. I want to thank Dr. John Sclair with The Inner Diet for sharing his time with us today and his expertise from over 30 years of expertise and his program that's easy to implement and very helpful for your patients. So until next time, you guys take care. Bye.